Uh, hello everyone, I hope you're having a nice day today. Um, today we're going to go back to what we were doing yesterday. So yesterday we were trying to create a parser for, well sorry, we were writing tests for our girl client uh, to connect to the Twitch. Um, 
chat API, one thing that you might have noticed is how we have um, our uh, chatbot is just um, dropping messages in the chat saying what we're up to. Um, so yeah, so it's dropping messages saying like how um, the things that we're going to be working on today. And that was one thing that we built on the stream. Uh, today, we're just going to go back and uh, continue writing some of the tests, but also fixing some of the um, like starting writing the parser for the messages themselves, right? Because we need to figure out uh, how to parse some of these messages. Uh, for example, when someone joins, we want to be able to parse that. Um, and when someone de uh, departs, we wanna learn how we're going to want to parse that too. Uh, but the part that we're going to be focusing on today um, is this message that the Twitch um, chat returns when we try to, uh, when we authenticate against it. So we authenticate against it. And we also, so we have to take it against it, and we also tell it that uh, uh, our clients supports, like the different commands that they that, uh, they support. So, the thing we need to do also is like we also have to parse these things here. Um, so we just have to look at how the parsing will work, um, and then the po different positions that we have to um, parse. Uh, for example, like this here looks very um, familiar. Uh, and this one here also looks very familiar. So look, they look the same. So we have to figure out how to parse them better. Um, one thing I was thinking of doing um, is using. So a while back, I wrote a uh, a parser. Uh, so the thing I've been thinking about is just using that parser as an example. So yeah, so I wrote a parser. So um, what I've been thinking about is just going back and we like looking through the code and figuring out like the different things that I did um, to then go back and use that as part of the parsing, right? So um, if you could do that, that means that we could go back, we used, um, we could, uh, so there's something called par um, parsing theory. So uh, when I built this parser, I was trying to stick to it. Um, so we don't have to stick close to it at this time around, um, but we can just figure out how it would look like if we were just doing like some kind of parsing um, in this setup. Uh, so the way it pretty much works is that you have the different, uh, for the parsing, you have the different, um, like tokens that you will get. Uh, so one token that we're going to get often is the corner. Um, so we just have to figure out how to parse that. And then we get, uh, for this one, we are getting, um, a bit more information. So we're getting two things. So we're getting, um, first we're getting the Twitch server. Then we're getting um, the command that we're sending. Um, so these are commands and cells. So it's just saying that it acknowledged them. Um, and then it's then telling us the different capabilities that we turned on. So you could go back and figure out the different capabilities for it. So that's kind of how it's going to go on today. Uh, we just have to figure out like how to parse these different messages. Uh, so like after we need to make sure that we keep track of like when it gets initialized and when it, um, so we need to make sure that when we initialize the client, we know the kind of messages that we're expecting. Um, so like also how to handle these different things. Cause, uh, we should never, these are not real messages. We should never display them here. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to be doing today. Uh, the angle of what we're trying to achieve is a way for us to show um, somewhere around here, uh, or maybe in the other side. I haven't decided yet, but somewhere around here, I want to show. I want to show the chat messages. So every time we get a, a chat message, I just wanted to show up in the chat. Uh, sorry, to show up in the stream as well. Uh, so you can see when I saw it. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to go for. Um, as part, like this is why we're building it. Um, one thing that we ended up building is our um, we created a week ago or two weeks, we ended up creating a server send event, um, sorry, server sent event server, which just means a way for a server to send events to a browser. So the browser is constantly listening for those events. Uh, if you have worked with WebSockets, it's kind of the same, but in it's a one way direction. So the client cannot um, send events to the server, but only the server could send events to the client. Uh, so uh, we're going to be reusing that for as part of, of this work as well. So we're going to send an event. So I use something called OBS for streaming. Uh, so we're going to send events from all, uh, from our um, 
server uh, sorry, server send event server. So we're gonna send events from there to uh, OBS browser source, and then the browser source is gonna uh, display it as part of the stream. Um, so it's, I'm still figuring out the design of it, but it's mostly gonna be um, like some boxes with the different badges that people have, uh, plus like um, maybe their um, profile image. Um, so that's the kind of thing I've been thinking about. But first, we need to figure out how to parse these different things, right? So we have to figure out like, how do we parse all these different events. Um, but for now, the way we can start thinking about it is that there's two things. There is a colon, um, and then there is a colon here. So we could just start building certain uh, parsing. So we could create some um, tokens to start parsing those things. Um, so I've been writing. So yesterday, we ended up writing a bit of tests. So we could run the test here. Um, and this is how our test looks like. Uh, so right now we're only testing that we're sending back this uh, the capabilities commands, and then we're just checking that we got them back. Um, that's kind of the only thing that we're checking. Um, the next thing that we're going to have to check is that we want to check um, the response back that we get from the server. Um, so we're going to have we're going to send something to the server, and then we're going to um, check a set of response to it. So we're going to pretty much just send this information to the server. Um, yeah, so we're going to just send this information to the server and then we're going to set our response. So we're, we wrote a test server yesterday as well. So we are just going to uh, test that test server um, and then use that to um, send that information back to the server. Cool. Um, and then here, so here, this is our test file. So I have to jump over. So here I'm just going to end up making some new tokens. Um, so again, I'm going to create a type um, and then do uh, token. Oh, hey, we have a new follower. Thank you for following us, Tiago Chanetti. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, uh, but thank you for the follow. Um, that's weird. I think the sound for the for the notification is still a bit wanky. I wonder what I like if I broke something when I was refactoring. Um, so you might have heard it twice. Sorry about that. Um, but I think it's because I um, I was trying to do I was trying to fix it uh, a while back. I thought I did, but I probably didn't fix it. I just made it worse. Or well, it's still it's still bad. Uh, so I'm going to create a new Go file. So I was looking at I, I was just like, this doesn't really belong here. Uh, so I'm going to create a new Go file for parsing. I'm just going to call it parser. And then I'm going to create a, a token. Um, let's see, token. And it's going to be an alias to, uh, to the end integer. So I just want to make sure what these tokens are. So. Okay, so yeah, so the tokens themselves are so because we don't we don't have that many tokens. Um, we could save a bit of memory if we just declare it the integer as um, a bit, but we don't have to do that now. We're just gonna keep as as a thirty two, um, and then here we just have to create a new. Um, let's see what I call them. I just call them what they are. Okay. Uh, So we just make, need to make sure that uh, did I use uppercase? I did the uppercase and everything. So let's try that. Um, and it's type token, and then we do iota, which just it just tells um, so anything under it. Oops. I'm, I have to get rid of that autocomplete plugin because I'm just 
already spent most of the time just fighting with the auto complete. Okay. Uh, so what we're saying now is that since we're in our chat message, we're expecting to have uh, so pretty much every message starts with a comment, and then the next one starts with a um, at symbol. So. Oh, we have another follower. Uh, thank you so much for following us, Sirius716. Uh, thank you for the follow. I mostly, mostly appreciate it. Um, so we just have an add symbol here. So I'm just going to add. Uh, and because we are using IOTA, we don't have to worry about the value for it. So it will be the way that this works is that um, IOTA just says, uh, so you can start with, it starts at zero. So it goes zero and then the next constant value is going to be one and just keeps going down. Oh, hey, Harnik, how's it going? Thank you for the follow, Harnik. Um, I, let me know if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, so um, what we're, a recap of what we're doing, pretty much we're just writing a Go client for um, sending messages and receiving messages from the Twitch chat. Um, this is just pretty much me just going back to writing Go. I haven't wrote, I haven't written any Go in like a year and a half. Uh, so this is me going back, learning the syntax, relearning the syntax, um, and figuring out how to do certain things. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going through it and making sure that that things work correctly. Uh, but that's where I kind of what I'm going for. Um, so yeah, so. Um, so for context, we ended up writing an IRC client, which is what uh, Twitch uses for their chat servers. Um, so we are just building on top of it. We ended up just building the whole uh, the whole client ourselves um, using the Go dialer. Um, so we're using dial to be able to connect to the servers um, itself. Um, so it's, it looks something like this if you're interested. Um, Um, so the ladder itself just takes a server, so it takes a Twitch server, and then we use the Twitch server to to connect to it. Um, so it just opens a TCP connection. Um, and RC is just pretty much a uh, plain text protocol, so we could just send plain text to it. So we just write into it the different like uh, messages we're authenticating against it, and then we're saying which channel we want to connect to. Um, and then every time someone that jo someone joins, uh, we send a message saying. Uh, this is kind of what we're working on today because um, some of the times like I forget to give a recap so this is trying to make it a lot easier um, and then uh, one thing I've been doing too is I've been uploading the the, uh, the streams into uh, YouTube for uh, to keep the uh, archive of them um, it would be nice to see to put a shot in it uh, so if you could see, like you could see um, so because someone just joined um, oh well you just joined so since you jo just joined, um, is it going to send you a message saying like what we're working on today? Um, so what we're doing now is just writing the parser for how to parse these messages, right? So um, this is kind of what the messages that's, that the Twitch client is going to be sending. Um, and then we can just continue from there. So it's going to be a bit um, interesting because we have to figure out how to parse the different uh, places, right? So we need to figure out how to parse um, like this here. We will have to figure out how to parse that. Um, and then like the different commands that he's sending us. Um, but for now, I just want to figure out how to parse like the first part of it. Um, and then we just take it from there. And I'm using, so um, like a year, well, sorry, like three years ago or something like that. Yeah, three years ago, I wrote a lips parser uh, just for fun. Um, and I'm just going back to seeing how I create, I did the parsing, so I could just reproduce some of the parsing stuff. I liked it a lot. Um, so like the new lines and like the different things that you have to do for it. Um, I, I also try using some cool syntax that I haven't used before. Um, so that's kind of the cool thing about it. Um, and the goal is to be able to just like build, um, it goes line by, by, sorry, character by character, and then it just builds a, you just figure out how to parse the next thing, right? Um, 
So it could be cool to figure out how to do this again, uh, but for the Twitch client. Um, and the thing that uh, we need to know about it, so uh, this parser is doing the whole file, right? So the parser itself takes, um, do I have any samples? I think I do. Yeah, so it takes like, this is how the samples look like. Um, and then it just like parses it to something like this. So that means that, um, so I'm, I'm applying um, parsing theory, so it just tokenizes it, right? Um, so it tokenizes it in a way that um, it says, um, the, like, when the param starts and like the different actions that we would take afterwards, um, and then just returns that in a, it creates a way for us to be able to, to make something out of it. Um, so that's the cool part about it. Um, so here, I'm just gonna take some of the things that we're doing here. Uh, where did I put that? Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the thing that I'm, uh, we're gonna be doing. And also, one thing I'm gonna try to do is like write more tests as I go, because uh, most of the time you have to, if you, you have to go back and rewrite some of your logic, uh, because of how strict Go is when it comes to like some of the syntax. Um, so here we're just gonna create a, uh, a method. So to make it easier to turn it back to string. So we're doing tokens. So I set up not a pointer. So token. And here we can just do token. And we're just gonna use the convert to string. Uh, what this function is gonna do is just it's gonna it's gonna return the string representation of our tokens. Um, so in our case it's just amp. So there is amp semicolon so we have semicolon which I should add next yeah, let me add all of them first before I do that so uh, semicolon uh, we have semicolon we have equal sign um, I wonder how you behave if someone has an equal sign in their name. Uh, equal sign, semicolon, uh, semicolon, then colon, then the server, then the command, and command. What else? I thought I saw exclamation point somewhere, but I guess I'm guessing that. Yeah, exclamation point. So there's an exclamation point too. So we need to figure out how to handle that too. Uh, so th sorry, there's an exclamation mark. Um, so we you have to track those too. Um, and that will. So we have. So let's see. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I oh, uh, we we have to do the uh, the hash too. So the number sign. So yeah, we need to do the hash. Um, and the hatch just says that we're in a channel. That what the next, the next uh, piece of information you're gonna get is a channel. Uh, so what we're trying to do, so the way it's gonna work is that we're gonna have different, depending on the place that we are. So the cool thing is that it's, it's just one line, right? So everything that we're gonna get is one line. Um, so we're never gonna get all of this at once. Uh, so everything's gonna be broken down by new line because of how uh, the RC ch chat works. Uh, so everything here is just it's the first message that we get is just this line here and then it just uh, we get a new line and then we move on to the next one so each one will be a new line so we don't have to parse all of it at once we're just going to parse it parse it line by line um, and that means that we could clean up some of these things as we go as well because it's going to make it easier um, okay so for the ping we have uh, so we should make the ping a 
Uh, so it's like a command, but it's also a token too, which is kind of weird. So let's just make it a token. Um, because the way that the ping is happening is that so everything starts with a colon or a uh, amp sorry, an at uh, symbol. Um, and then even the like the room states and things like that start like that. Um, which is great. But then the issue now is that we need to figure out how to parse certain things too, right? It's like we just... Um, um, no, I think yeah, that makes sense. So the, uh, the way that the string could start with is we could start with three things, right? We could start with a um, a uh, colon. We could start with an ampersand, sorry, an add, and then we could start with a uh, the ping. So that would make our parsing a lot easier. So, um, so let's go back here. So now the next thing we just have to do is like just the token names. Um, so we are gonna do okay. It returns a string, um, and it just does like a token. And this here is just a um, a map that we're going to be using. Is it? Okay. Oh, so sure, but it is an inch. Uh. Oh, no, it's not. It's just because I'm making it into a pointer and that's why it's complaining. Uh, so what we're doing now is that we're, um, so first we declare a the tokens themselves, which are just, it's gonna be um, just uh, integers. So we are gonna be using those to just know where we are in the call. So we end it in the stream itself. Um, as we parse the text, we are gonna use those as markers. Um, and then we are, we add a new method to the token, uh, structure that converts the integers that we have so uh, colon for example is going to be turned into just the representation of it in a string um, so that will make it a lot easier for us to parse as we go because we could just use this to um, like as part of the parser um, and i just have to like continue just like spelling them out So this will make it a lot easier for us. If we have to add anything else in the future, it will make it a lot easier for us to go back and add it. Um, and most uh, most parsers, most most like interpreter languages have something like this, right? They have something called a uh, a tokenizer, which takes the uh, the file. So let's do let's think about Python. So for Python, um, there is a tokenizer that when you first load your your Python code, it will send it to the tokenizer. It's gonna to tokenize the code, so it's gonna be like, um, it's gonna take uh, the representation of the file and convert it to a, uh, a for a way to know like where a function is being defined and how to find it, um, and then it gets parsed into the parser. So it's like a two-step process, which is uh, it makes parsing a lot easier and adding new functionalities a lot easier in some cases. Uh, ping is the weird one because it's just ping. Uh, okay, so we now we have the, the parser. Um, so let's see. So we're pretty much building a scanner. So the scanner just moves it moves forward um, until it finds um, the next token. So this one is a bit complex because of how 
um, on how uh, the lips specs are defined. So ours is going to be a bit simpler. So we're just going to go through this and figure out like what we can use from it. Um, so again, we're just building a parser. Um, the parser itself is just uh, scans each character. Uh, so it takes the input that we're getting. Uh, so in our case, we're, we take the string um, and then we convert it to um, we convert it to bytes, and then we just go by it. Uh, so character by character, and checking what each character does, right? And then we move the pointer forward as we go. Um, so that's kind of what we're gonna end up here doing here, right? So we're gonna have to do a. We are gonna make a scanner. And the scanner is going to take our message. Um, so it's going to take our message. And then we're going to take that message, which is a string. And what do we return here? So just return a scanner. So we don't have to do that too. So. Uh, we have a scanner and then so we're going to return a scanner uh, function which we don't have yet uh, so the scanner itself is just going to take so the scanner is the one we're going to be using to um, like move forward so we're going to go character by character so we're going to first uh, look at that first character um, and see if a if it's any of the ones that we already know so if is um if this is a we should just create a different so okay i have an idea so we could do as part of this here we just do uh we could create an array so we could do array we could call this uh initial So this is going to hold all the initial characters um, that we have. So in our case, this is going to be just via type token. So we create an array type token that takes a colon. And then it also takes a at sign. And then it also takes a ping. So what we're doing is that we're pretty much just saying that uh, the initial character has to be any of these three characters. Um, if it's not, we just gonna throw an error. Uh, but we could see that the initial one is like uh, we get a combination. So we get a combination of like um, if there is, if we go forward and we find a um, a exclamation point, that means we found a username. Um, so now all the characters that we have in there are part of the username. So that's kind of the username there. Um, and then if we continue going forward and we find a space, so at that point we could just terminate, right? We could just um, say like we could start a new token analyzer. Because the next thing that we're going to expect is a host. Um, and then we just have to say the command that we got. So if it's a join, the part, this part or something like that. Uh, in the case of a message, uh, let's see for a message. A message has a bit more context, right? Um, so a message has a bit of more context because it's saying pretty much all the information about the user, right? So it's saying what their display name is, um, and if they have a badge, right? And if they have, um, and then you have everything else that comes with that too. So like, um, you have now the colon here. So you should expect a colon and then, uh, after that you get the message. So. That's kind of what we're going to be doing more of. Um, here we need to uh, keep track of the uh, input and then what is left. So, uh, and this is just a set of bytes of byte. So it's a slice of byte and then the rest is just where we are in the position. So every time we move forward, we want to move the, the we want to make sure that we just move, uh, like push it forward, like reset it. Um, pretty much this is so we're pretty much building our own programming language on top of this um, so the way that we're gonna be parsing is mostly like a programming language um, so the next one is just a token which is just like the one that keeps track of um, 
So we need to keep track of when we find one of the symbols. So when we find, uh, for example, colon, we need to figure, like keep track of where the next token is going to be. So uh, we could start building certain things on top of it. Um, and then the position, which is where we are, and we don't, we're not going to be nested. So this is a lot simpler. As since we're not nested, we could just keep going down the line. Um, and then here we are just gonna start. Um, we need to cast this to be a uh, set of bytes. So here we just have to do um, and then here we just do we just return a scanner again. So we're, we're just building a, a we're just treating this as a programming language. So we're going to treat it as we are parsing a programming language where the first things that we want to learn how to parse are um, this message here, which is the welcome message. Um, and we're just going to discard them. We don't have to do anything special about them um, because I don't think we need them. Uh, the next thing we need to learn how to parse is the global state of the person of the account that is joining. So in this case, it's the, uh, our account, which is joining um, and then we just start building things from there. So here we're just going to return a new a, uh, a pointer to scanner. And the reason why we call it scanner is just because, again, we're just going to be scanning the text. Um, so we're going to scan the text as much as we can um, and just like, go down the line. So the input is just... Cool. It looks we have a new follower. Uh, Murphy. Oh, one. Thank you for for the follow. Um, hope uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, and thank you again for following me. Um, so I will promise to fix that noise, the, the alert, at some point. Um, I really thought I got it last time, but it's still buggy now. Um, so again, thank you so much for the follow. Um, so now we're just gonna continue building our. Um, um, Tokenizer. So we're just gonna token like we're just gonna uh, continue reading for it. So um, because we're this ones here, we're gonna use to keep track of where we are. Uh, so this one, the input never changes because we don't want to touch the input in case we need to do the debugging. We want to keep it as it is because we wanna we're gonna print it out at some point to see if we have any bugs. Uh, the rest is just every time that we push forward, we want to uh, just end up coding that up a bit. Uh, so we could use like a slice. We could, uh, so we could just move the pointer forward, and that means that the uh, rest will get smaller every time that we parse a character from it. Um, so that's kind of what we are going to be doing there. Um, and then the position is zero, and the token is also not defined. So I wonder where token is used. Um, I don't remember where it was being used before. Um, so let's see. Oh, so yeah, so, sorry. So I was off. So token is being used to keep track of um, the current token that we're reading and then it resets it later on. Um, so as we go, when the token starts, right? When we, So we're going to read a uh, one character at a time. Um, and then we're going to, so we're going to pick at a character um, and then we're going to check what it is and then take it from there. There was something weird that I had to do with. Um, I don't have to worry about that. All right, so we don't have to do that either. So these are checking. So uh, for the lips uh, specs, you have to check certain things. So if it starts with a digit or if it starts with um, like a weird symbol, you're not able to use it as a like a starting for the symbol itself. Um, and then you have to handle digits numbers differently because you have to do some additions on the number. Uh, so for now, let's just, uh, I think we should stop looking at this at this point because it's going to just make it a bit more complicated. Um, so let's see. So position of where it starts. Uh, we need to keep track of while we're scanning. So I think this is what it's doing. Again, I wrote this code three years ago. I haven't looked at it in three years. Um, so. 
Let's see what we could find, like we could figure out here. At least I left comments, which is very good. Okay, so what we're doing here is uh, we're checking what the, it is, right? We're checking if it's an integer, we're gonna add it to the integer. Um, and if it's a flow, we're gonna add it to the flow uh, field type. And then if it's a string, we're gonna add it to the string. What we're gonna be dealing with right now is just strings. So um, we could just do, we could just have one uh, value. And then this structure is the one that we're gonna be using to keep track of the different uh wait where is the token type so where is value there's one thing that I, um the so next where is next being used oh next is being used in the parser file so yeah cool um and next is just like going token by token so next Um, and then there's something called token name. Oh, okay. So the way it works is that um, we're returning to things. We're returning. So the next scanner, I think we should. Yeah. The next scanner is returning the value. So, um, and the position. So in our case, we have the position, which is a uh, just the indice of where. Uh, the value is and then so we have the position and we only need to worry about the string so i'm just gonna call it uh just tax uh, we since we're only dealing with tax uh, we don't have to worry about like the different kind of uh of structure sorry different kind of types that we're gonna be dealing with um so we could just use um the next token here um and then we just have to start parsing it right so we're gonna start parsing uh each letter um so here, the way it works is that I'm declaring a room and then I'm creating a new value. Um, uh, here, the way the I am, there's two ways to write this. So there is the way using the new keyword or just using uh, the upper sign next to it. So I might just end up using upper sign here. Um, and then C is just gonna be a room, which in Go, a room is just a, uh, you could think about it how, um, so there is uh, just single uh, characters, so all single size characters. So um, something like this, look at this better. But it would be better to just like explain this, yeah, by sample. So this one explains it better. Yeah. So a room, so anything that is like a single digit um, and also a uh, small case character um, is declared as a, um, it's just like a Unicode, right? It's, it's, it's like a single bit. Um, character um, and then there is the the more intense ones which are uh, like when you're doing something like other languages so if you do uh, Japanese if you do uh, Chinese you have to use something called runes which is used to uh, it's a representation representation of that string in memory so if you have like a uh, a symbol like Chinese characters or Japanese characters those will be stored in that room and that means that they're um, so they're not single they cannot the things with runes is that they could be um, in length. So the length of the, of the room could be different sizes, um, which is makes it a bit harder to parse, but it, it makes it possible that Go supports multiple languages. So you could, I'm not sure if this is possible. I think you could write a um, bunch of names in, the, in like uh, Chinese, for example. Um, so here we are just going for, um, so we need to pick which is just looking at the next, like the length of what is next. Um, so then it does a do that. Then uh, we don't need to worry about new lines because there's no new line. Uh, so what we're doing here is that we're taking, um, taking if the length 
of the remainder. So uh, the rest is just, we're just moving to, the, like every time that we move next, we are pushing the, uh, we're pushing by one character. So every time we do next, we're pushing by one character and just making sure that that one character is there. Um, So we have one character. Um, let's see. So, so we have to implement pick. Uh, so here we have to implement which one was it? Oh, uh, which is the value that we're gonna be using. So uh, here we just you know value um, and sure there is easiest ways to do this. You could just do regex or anything like that to do the pattern matching uh, but I am also good in, in pattern matching cool yeah so th that's very cool that you're using it to write Arabian um, so yeah it, the language itself lets you like pretty much just um, it opens um, it lets you to write in, uh, lets you write in multiple languages um, I already know if, I think I'm not sure if they ever fix this but PHP had an issue where you could only write in English characters um, and you struggle if you're uh, hoping to support multiple languages or you're supporting like a language that was not um, uh, like an alphabet language um, like Arabian or uh, Chinese and Japanese you will end up having to I think you have to use like a library or something or you have to build something uh, yourself in C to be able to support it um, and I think that's kind of the same case with Python, only say they fix that in Python 3. Um, but that happens. It, it makes it like, Go. the thing with Go is like, it tries to make it a lot simpler to support um, just using Unicode uh, in general. Um, and that's kind of what the uh, runes here do for you. It's just like an easy way to do it. Um, so we just have to implement our geek function. So the peak function is just looking on at what is the next character that we're going to be using. Um, so it's going to take a look at the next character um, and it's not going to push forward. It's not going to move the array forward. Uh, sorry, it's not going to move our pointer forward um, because we still need to like figure out where it is, right? Um, in our case, like it could be any of these cases. Um, so let's do um and peak doesn't return to return yeah it does return a room um so that means like if someone starts writing in a uh in like a different language like arabian or japanese uh our uh our client would automatically take it. It wouldn't even fail. It would just be like, oh, okay, I know how to handle this character. Um, and then it would just go and do the necessary work to convert it back into uh, text. The only thing, we, one thing that we will have to look at, uh, into is how do we handle that in the uh, JavaScript side? So I haven't had to deal with, um, I haven't had to deal with uh, supporting like a different language uh, in, JavaScript, so we will have to figure out how to do that too. And by different language, I mean a language that is not um, part of like, you have to use any code to represent that language. Um, sure, why not? Uh, do I want to panic? I always, when I, when I wrote this here, I was like, this is a bad idea. Uh, but I think I, I, there is a, wait, yeah. I remember what I did. So I was like, this is a bad idea, but then I, I uh, implemented recover. Uh, so we panic and then we recover. So in Go, um, when you panic, you could do a deferral function that looks for a recover. Um, so look for recover and if recover is uh, not nil. It then takes that, that message from the panic, makes into an error, and then you return that as an error. And because you're declaring the the value here for error, it just overwrites it. So it's very cool. Um, so this is when you have to deal with with, uh, with code that is not able to return back an error. Uh, in the average case, because we're gonna be scanning down and we could probably pass the error back up. Um, so let's think about it. Um, yeah, we could make C return an error. 
Um, I don't think since we're going to be doing anything nested. Um, see, yeah, since we're not doing anything nested, we could just return an error. And if we error out, um, we could just error out here. So I don't think we need to panic. We just need to uh, just make sure that we return two things here. We should return a uh, error. We should return a room and then an error. Um, and then here we just do. Uh, no, we do error. And what was the error that we were returning here? Parser. We want the scanner. Uh, and the error that we were returning was. Um, oh, wait, we're not returning an error here. We're just returning zero. Uh, wait, where was I looking at that there was an error? Oh, I was looking here. Uh, okay. So here we just return zero, which just means that there's no more characters. Um, and then we're just gonna exit. Uh, the next thing we need to do is check this. Uh, turn the, the uh, like what the remainder, and then cut it. So we're gonna be cutting it by the size. Um, so we look at it. Uh, so we're converting the text, then we're cutting it by the size, and then we're pushing the position forward if there's any. Uh, Oh, this is mostly for. Wait, did I have to? I don't have that. Oh, it's because it's not in here. Uh, so we're just going forward. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to go forward. There is no need to go. Uh, in the, what I was doing here is I was going uh, down the line. So if a file ha has multiple lines, we will have to go um, finish one line, then go check if there's a, a, a new line return. If there's a new line, we move on to the next line. And in our case, we don't have to do any of that. We just have to move forward in uh, the size. So I'm just gonna, let's see here, right? Yeah, so uh, the position here is just gonna be increased. Um, so here we are just taking uh, the size. So we're coding it uh, by the rest. And then, so whatever is left, we're gonna uh, cut it. We're just slicing this, this slice itself uh, by the size. And then we're adding that to the rest. Um, and then we are going to increase the position by one. Um, and the position we're using it later on, uh, let's see. We're going to increase it by one. Um, and the position where you're going to use it later on for uh, every time you, use, you call next, it's going to trigger it. Um, so that's kind of what we're going for here. Uh, and then we just return um, the R. So what we're saying here is that um, we are reading. So we're taking, we are reading the next uh, room of. Wait, am I pronouncing? I might not be pronouncing that correctly, but for now, go ahead, room. So we're gonna we're scanning. We're getting the the next room, and then we're saying uh, we're gonna cut the rest of the input in by the size of the room. So if the room is one character, one byte. We are going to cut it for one by if it's a unicode, we're going to cut it by the length of the unicode. Uh, then we are pushing our position forward by one because, again, we want to handle multiple languages, but in our file, it just looks like one line, so we're just going to push it on by one line. Um, so let's see. So we're pushing it forward, um, and then here we just have to go to the different steps. So in our case, we don't need that. Uh, and this is just going to return to here. And for now, I don't think we need an error. And either. Oh, uh, I should make this the return. So we're returning value and then okay, we don't have yet. Okay. Um, so now start talking for next, which is uh, we need to white handle tabs in white space, which is the tokens that we're going to use. Uh, I think I'm not talking for white space, so I should probably add that. Uh, so white space is just means like when, um, for example, in our case, if there is. Um, 
if we have a white space here, uh, so we have white space here, so we just have to track that white space too. White space. Um, and since, since we're, we're using IOTA, we just have to add things to the bottom of the list. Um, well, not even that. So we could add things into the list where in whatever position that we want, because the call itself, like the chart, the representation, sorry, the representation of uh, of the tokens is just an integer. And when we move the the when we move them, um, like here, um, the integer itself changes. But that means that also how we process it, the tokens also change. Um, so there wouldn't be any like main issue for us to do that. Um, cool. So we don't have the token, but now we could look into like um, if there's a space. Okay, so let's do the first one we want to handle is okay. Let's do this. Let's just handle our first case, which it could be uh, a colon and arm, uh, a at sign, a symbol, and what was the other one? And a pink. So let's handle those two. Um, so we are going to do if um, c equals. Um, and since we're using single characters, we have to use the single characters for it. So sorry, since we're using uh, single quotes and we're turning things into uh, bits, we have to use the single character for those. So we want to do um, colon. Or, uh, token does a star in the row and then the value wonder if I okay so yeah we should just stop looking at that because that's gonna confuse you also a bit um, and here we are going to return just uh, an invalid token, which we're going to declare here. Um, if you're just joining, uh, I am working on creating a parser for our uh, Twitch client. Um, there, so the, the, the parser itself is going to parse the different messages that, the, that Twitch is sending us. Uh, I am taking a different uh, approach here. I am treating this whole thing as a programming language of some kind. Um, so I'm running a parser for it that's just going to parse through it. And then as we parse through it, we are just going to uh, get the information out of it. And yeah, uh, so we're going to get information and sorry, give me a second. I want to make sure that that's right. Uh, okay, I see. Um, so we are instead of using something like regex we are going to uh, just parse each character so uh, for example we're going to do colon and then uh, in this case t and then m then i then we're going to continue down the line and then we're going to find a space uh, right and then we're going to uh, store this information uh, and then we're going to uh, go again then we're going to store uh, this information here and then we're going to store the information here. Um, that's kind of how we go it's going to go uh, as we start building this, this uh, our parser. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be the same way. So it's going to be TI and then uh, it's going to read this whole thing one character at a time. Uh, then it's going to find the space and they're going to read this character here uh, and then the symbol here and the symbol here and then it's going to find the column there. Um, and then the job of our parser will be able to figure out how to parse this. So this is pretty much the scanner. Uh, and the job of the scanner is just to scan every character. Um, and then, yeah. So it's gonna take a bit of like time to build up. Um, but it's gonna be worth it because then we can just add new things as we go. Okay, so I... I think I messed up a bit here. Um, I just have to write the word. Just a low-case version of it, so. 
uh, because we're going to be printing them, um, it will be a bit confusing to just like. So we're just replacing those words. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're we we're just going to replace those words in place. Uh, so every time we see a semicolon, we just just going to replace the semicolon uh, with just the word semicolon. Um, and then, so that's kind of how our parser is going to work. It's going to just ask for the next character. And we, when it asks for the next character, it's just going to parse it and turn it into a, um, into a string. So it will look something like, so if we get, let's pick the topic. It's going to look something like, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get uh, back from our uh, scanner. We're going to get colon and then we're going to get uh, squish. Uh, no colon though. So we're going to get the Twitch uh, server. Then we're going to get uh, white space. Then we're going to get cap. And then we're going to get this here. And then we're going to get knowledge. And then we're going to get colon again. And then we're going to get this message here. Um, so that's how our parsing is going to look like. Um, we will have to figure out certain things like um, this seems like a command. So I might turn that into a command. Um, and then as part of the command, I'm just going to look that for this for. Um, so that's kind of how it's going to be represented for our scanner. So the scanner itself is just going to uh, Every time we ask it for the next character, um, for the next token, it's just going to give us the next token. Um, so the next token will be, uh, I think, this here. Uh, but as we go, we just have to start building it. Um, that's a good thing. So maybe the one that we should start with is a uh, semicolon. Because if we start with semi, sorry, with a colon, to, if you start with that one, we, that will be the, like, the kind of first messages we're going to get. So let's start building that one so we can write a test for it. So, um, so this one, yeah. so calling is the first one, and then here, uh, let's look at this one last time. We do next. No, that's fine. Um, if it's a, we're gonna start a value, and then string number. We care about that so. You just have to implement uh, start token. So start token. So our token, which is gonna just start our token. Um, and then that's the end of the token. So we need to figure out how to end the token. But for now, this is how our string starts. So it just goes, it just follows as for the next one. As long as the next one is not there, if it's a quote, it breaks. In our case, if there is a space, we break. Um, okay. So start token. And then we can start token. Start token text all value and then start it. I think you just says like um yeah it says a token and then it says value. So we don't need some things here, but let's see. This is a pointer to value. Oh, I should just use the version of it. Uh, so we have the position of where we're going to be. So this is pretty much just telling us where we, where that token started, um, in case we just had to print an error or something. Um, and so this is set up. 
so this is we're scanning the token um, and then this is not valid so I think I'm just gonna call those uh, it's kind of interesting because it's not a mess it's like a, like a command sort of so yeah what did they call it in there The membership shows the tags. Uh, we have the commands. So I'm just gonna call it um, not an initial message. I let's see something comes up. Uh, the colon is so not an initial message. So app has the extra information for memberships. So I will just call it like uh, not membership. So that's kind of what we get from membership. Then from commands, it's a different commands that we're gonna support. So uh, that cleans the commands, and they start with add. Is just removing people from I don't think we have to support that now. Um, cool. um, we're gonna do okay. So we have invalid. Um, we need to call here um, next. So we're gonna move the our pointer forward here um, and then we need we would declare that next but uh, when we move, move it forward we then have to scan um, what the next character is gonna be so uh, that's the end of it so okay we're here we we'll create a new one but we're um so let's think that we're scanning a string so we are scanning screen because we're going from our sample on top we are uh so we are scanning the host name uh so i'm just call it i'm gonna call it message just uh I'm gonna call it a uh, scan simple message, which is a simple message that we're gonna get from Twitch. Um, so here we do pass bar, yeah, we pass bar and the, the character that we're scanning. Um, okay, so that means that now we have uh, we move our pointer forward, so that means that we are now uh, we are here. So we were here before, now we're here. Um, since we're moving forward, we just have to scan this whole thing until we get space. Um, so, 
uh, let's do next. Let's implement next and then I'm gonna go and write some tests because I wanna make sure this thing works correctly. Um, because we haven't tested, we haven't run this at all. And I'm always afraid of writing a bunch of code and not testing half, like not going back and be able to test some of it because then debugging becomes very difficult. Uh, so this takes bar and then, wait, no, this is just next. Um, so next here, So our function next is the one that does all the magic. So I think it's just where is next. Okay. Uh, so next just oh it pretty much does the same thing as peak. Why did I not reuse peak? Oh, peak doesn't move forward. Ah, so our peak function is wrong. Our peak function is our next function. Uh, peak doesn't move forward, it just takes a look. So this could be our next function. So we should just, we could just move this down. Yeah, so our, our Peak function is our next function. So next is a combination of our next function and our peak function together. Uh, so peak is in charge of just peaking. So it doesn't it does everything with the exception of moving the pointer forward. So that's kind of what was happening here. We just want it. So yeah, so peak is peak, so it doesn't do this here. Um, and then it returns the character. So zero and it returns. Next doesn't return anything. Um, and next is the one that panics. Because if there's nothing there, there's nothing to go to next. Um, so we leave that there. But I, it's interesting that I, I just like re-implemented it. Um, well, I guess I needed to do if it's a new line, I need to move forward. But I could have done that here too. So maybe I just use peak. Yeah. So let's just use peak here. So, uh, so peak is gonna peak for us the next character and then we are going to move the pointers forward so to move the pointers mm, I see also something else that we were doing that we shouldn't be doing here uh, so there is that um, yeah we shouldn't be doing that oh I see that is the issue with big. So we don't have the size. I could, I could just make it return the size. So peak itself returns a oh, and an integer. And then zero. And here is just size. Or just return. Okay. Um, then here we have size, which is precise in it. Um, what do we do? We... Okay. So next also returns the next character. Okay. So. Okay, so now our next function does. Okay, so we change our peak function. Our peak function is just checking. Uh, it's just speaking, so it's looking at the first uh, whatever the next character is, uh, but it's not moving be our pointer forward. And then uh, our next function is pretty much using. Uh, it's just speaking, but also moving the pointer forward. So what we're doing here is that we're saying um, we're mo moving it by one. 
So we were saying we read this, this character, now it's time to move by one. Um, and then here, since we change peak, we just we don't use that at all. Uh, so we just got the message. Uh, pretty simple. So we read that. So I'm still struggling to what to call this here because it's not really a simple message because it's used in multiple places, right? Um, so it's used when um, when someone departs. It's used when someone joins. Um, so it, it's used in multiple places. We just need to figure out how to handle um, how to handle the messages. Uh, but we just have to, yeah, we just have to figure out how to handle that. So we just need to figure out a name for it too. Uh, so now I'm just gonna keep it call it simple, um, and take it from there. So let's see. Uh, so now we're gonna create our simple, our simple function, which is the one that's gonna be handling the initial parsing. So. Then this takes a value and a character. And the value is the one that we're going to be returning. Okay, so. Um, here, so. Our character is a colon. So we have the colon as a character. And then so, so we are let's see what let's just look at uh, the sample of the scanner itself that is placed in the string. Um so it handles the first bolt. Um better yet, let's just write a test for it for this. I think we're we have written some. We have written like a hundred lines of code, and it's kind of scary that there's no test for it. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this file, um, the parse file, because it's not a parser right now. It's just a scanner. I'm just gonna call it scanner, and then I'm gonna create a new test file to test our scanner. Um. Let's just make this a whole package. That would make it a lot easier. So we're gonna create a scanner package. Uh, and the reason why we're creating a package is just because we wanna we wanna make sure that the logic that we're using, some of the internal logic that we we're gonna be using for like scanning and parsing, uh, shouldn't be available for for anything outside of our scanner. Um, if you're just joining, uh, I am building a parser for a our uh, a week ago on. We started building a Twitch client and chatbot for our stream uh, in Go. So what I'm doing right now is that I am just um, going through our, uh, I'm just writing a parser. So there is like multiple ways of doing it, this, but I decided to go and just uh, start writing. So you could use like regex to do pattern matching, but I'm not using regex here. I'm just like writing a parser. Um, so I'm treating this like, I'm treating the, the Twitch that messages as a programming language. Um, so I'm applying parsing theory to it. So I'm, I'm parsing each character by itself and then tokenizing it. And then I'm gonna uh, create a like a parser for it. Uh, so that's kind of what we're working on. Um, and I wrote a bunch of code without writing a test, uh, which is something that I wanted to also do as part of the string. It's like writing more tasks. Um, so I wanna make sure that I am also writing like test as I go. Um, here we are just, uh, just going to start writing. Oh, I found the Facebook package. Um, we are just going to write a test for, for this. So we're going to initialize our scanner. 
uh, the goal or, or the main goal of the scanner itself is just to tokenize it. So we want to pass a string like this one here. I want to get back something like this, right? We want to get back uh, broken down pieces of it. So we want to get like, okay, so the next token, if we ask for the next token, we're going to get the next token, which will be um, this part here. Um, I'm going to step out for a bit. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm gonna step out. If I step out, I'm gonna put the music on and I'm gonna put this uh, standby uh, screen. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Uh, let's go back to it. Okay. Uh, so what we're trying to do now is just write a test that we pass. So the scanner itself, the goal of the scanner is to uh, take a, a a string and tokenize it. So it's gonna to the way that it's gonna tokenize it is that it's gonna go each character and then replace the special tokens that we need to keep track of. So uh, colon and then Y space and then the command and then uh, the appropriate sign sorry the asterisk and then the acknowledgement we have to keep track of those things we want to return them as tokens um, so that's kind of what we have to do next um, so we just have to go through it and just make sure that our scanner works correctly um, so every time we ask for a, for a token it should give us the right token um, let's see so um, and the best way to do it is just uh, write a test for it to make sure that it works correctly as we expect it because the more that we the more code that we write the harder it's going to be for us to figure out like where it's broken so if you have tests for this we are able to track it better so we are just going to start a new scanner so scanner or it's just scanner cool and what we want to put in is just this We're just putting a, a message in it, which is what we're the, we are going to pass from our uh, Twitch client, um, and then for the scanner, we are going to call next token. Uh, so, and we're just going to print next token. Um, so each time we find a token, um, each, we should get the whole thing. And then until we get the next one. Uh, so that's kind of how the scanner, the scanner itself is going to work. The scanner is going to go, it's going to return a full token. So the full, the first token that we should get um, for our example is uh, this here. Um, so that will be the first one that we get. Um, then the next one that we get will be um, this one here. So this will be the end. Uh, the next token that we should get is this one. But we should get a white token, uh, white space. All right. Oh, so file, then go here. Oh, we need to. We have an error. Um, Uh, 
Ali. And we're just gonna print here too. So we just we want to show uh, make sure that we're what we're getting here. If you're new to this channel, I use print heavily. Um, it's pretty much my main thing. Okay, uh, so I have a string. I don't. So be the next thing to here. Turn this. Oh, I'm not returning anything as far as that. Might be invalid, so. And this is not a token. We get the things we get. Uh, oh wait, we do get a token, so we get token. We get the token, and then we get the values. So right now we don't really care about the value. We only care about the Uh, invalid because you're not doing anything. Um, so, we turn here again. So, um, turning. Oh, I'm returning. So, I am returning, and maybe I should just. Turning here. Forward. And then I'm returning value and then the talking type. So the talking type here is a value. But we also have the talking type. So the talking type here is uh So that's good. Um, and the character, if you can see, this is just the uh, integer representation of Colin. So that's what we're getting. Um, and value is just zero because it's not there. Um, so the next thing we have to do is that we have to. Uh, let's go back to the stream parsing. Because it does, it does like some um, cool things when it comes to parsing. Uh, if you're joining, I am looking up a, a project that I wrote uh, three years ago. Uh, so I created a interpreter for a language called Lips. Uh, so I just created an interpreter interpreter for it. So I'm just going through it and seeing like um, I'm just relearning how to do like a parser, um, and then like going through it and making sure that um, we have enough information. Uh, okay, so the way it works is that we need to uh, we're gonna just do. I'll see here. Alright, no. Uh, so here we just have to do next. Uh, oh, I see why they use I use row value. Okay, that makes sense. I don't think we need that. Um, So this end set. Okay, that totally makes sense. Um, so here we're just gonna call it next. Uh, what we're doing here is that we're gonna loop um, as we go through it. We're gonna loop through um, every single character, and then here, if we get a white space, um, we have reached the end of the line. Uh, which means that our we just need to break. Oh wait, uh, that's right. it's oh. empty space. Okay, 
so we have that there so that means we're breaking so we, we are going to continue looping until we break uh the next thing that we have to do is implement our end token function um which is used to terminate the token itself so what we're doing here is that we're gonna we are gonna move so here we're uh, we have the uh set the calling uh then we're moving forward um we're gonna loop forward until we hit a space when we hit a space we are just gonna terminate and then we're gonna uh, run this logic here uh, in the end token, which is going to finalize the token for us. Um, so here, and just figure out like what end token does. Uh, so end token just converts it. Oh, I see. So end tokens just takes the length of the token. So it takes everything that is inside of the token. Um, and then what, where are we setting token? So yeah, so it just creates a slice of token from where um, It started Sorry from where how like uh, What is remaining so what it, the size of token minus the remainder? Like what is left inside of the, of, uh, the rest it becomes um, That's the, the string that's kind of why it makes it out of the string um, but I'm not sure where token is being set. Oh, oh, I see. So token is part of start token. All right. So when we started talking, um, when we created this token for the first time, we set a point that we said this is where the token is starting, and then we just rest. Then so we use whatever is remaining of the uh, inside of the rest uh, by slice. To terminate to figure out where it ends. So I could let's see. I could use as it's a good example. So try that. Uh, and So we end token we are doing two things here um why are we checking if it um no i'm just gonna not do that check i don't think we need it here so a text and then inside of text we get a string so this is where the conversion happens from uh byte uh, by slice to uh, a string uh, um, type. Uh, so we have token, and then here we're gonna do. So maybe I just uh, secret by for it. Um, so all that press. We're saying. Press size to do length. Look at that. So, whatever is remaining here. So, every time we move our pointer forward, uh, rest gets smaller. And then here we have so. Uh, token size. So, as our token, as we um, append to our token, so every time we move, I believe every time we move forward, the token. Yeah, so whatever is. Uh, so our token is pretty much whatever is left from RAS. So that's how we keep changing RAS. Um, and it's every time we call start token, happens. Uh, total size length. And then here we are going to do uh, test size is token. Size minus the rest size, and then that's kind of what we want to save here. So we're we're just slicing, we're slicing the token, um, based on the length of the size. Oh, sorry, based on this uh, text size that we just scan. Let's see if that works. 
Okay, so we're getting Colin, but now we have to check what the value is. That means we have to look at the value. I think we have a bit too much information here. We should only have gotten here uh, just this part here. So we might be doing something off there. There is. Oh, I know what it is. Uh, so we should be getting less characters. I know what the issue is. Uh, the issue is that we are we're starting it open here. Okay, we should start it. Next. Okay, so we're gonna call next there make it a lot easier to use um, and next should be public so I'm just gonna capitalize this now uh, same thing with uh, so in go if this is our sign you're seeing go uh, private and public methods and variables are declared with so lowcase is private uh, so lowcase is private uppercase is public so if the first character is uh, lowcase, this is a private method, so other packages cannot import it. Um, I changed my mind now, not to make them public just now, because I have to go and change it everywhere else. Uh, but I will do that later. Okay, um, so after that change, I just want to make sure that it works correctly. Um, let's make sure that it works correctly. Okay, that looks a lot better. Uh, so we were saying, so the way that it's working right now is that we're saying that um, we're saying that we got a con then we're saying that this is the message that we got um, and it's in position one of our um, string cool uh, so the next thing that we have to handle is so now we handle the space so the next one is a space um, so for this one we go back to our uh, next end function and here uh, so here we are in here uh, and now we have a space so when we call uh, next token again we are going to get a space um, and then so go all the way to the top uh, our space is then is it a command uh, let's see Uh, let's... Yeah, let's just read this. Um, there is like symbols, which is what I was using before. So a symbol is something that like a, a function or a variable definition. So when you define a variable, um, so I wonder if I should just turn that into a uh, symbol. And then I could treat them separately. So, um, but is there a usual space between it? So this is. Uh, so we just want to learn how to parse this. So let's just worry about the first three commands. Um, so we have now we know that this we are getting a colon, and then the value of the colon next to it is that. Uh, we got a space, so that will be the command. I'm going to treat it as a command. So, um, better? yeah, let's treat it as a command. So, here uh, we have space, so we're just going to put this space. So. One thing I tried to do when I was writing the, uh, the parser three years ago uh, for Lips was to um, be able to handle the cases that show up the most first. Um, so 
the first thing that I'm always going to chop the most first in uh, lips is parentheses, so the left and the right, so that's why they are in the top. Uh, the next thing you're going to get a lot is new lines, and then the next thing that you're going to get is um, just space. Uh, so the way that I ended up handling it was just like, um, just I try to keep the order like that. Uh, for this one, it's just straightforward. Uh, for next, um, we are just skipping the space, uh, starting and ending, and then just returning the space. So if we go back to our uh, function here, we could call this again. So every time we call uh, next token, it's just going to move on to the next token. So in this case, um, Next. Um, so again, we're going one character at a time until we find a token. Oh, that's. Oh, that's what I broke. Um, when I delete, I deleted a bit too much. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's go up. So every time we call next token, we're just gonna get the next token that our parser, our scanner has found. Um, so every time we find a new one, we are just gonna, uh, we, we're never gonna move forward unless the next function gets called. Um, I don't think there is tabs in this case. So I was, when I was building the parser, I was doing taps and spaces just because I was trying to be anno annoying. Uh, I was trying to be annoying for myself because I wanted to handle those things. I don't think the Twitch API is going to return both. Um, so here, uh, we just. Uh, now we're getting Valentine. So we just have to. We are just going to print. But the next character is uh, we're gonna have to turn into a string. Um oh oh Absent, that space. There is there is a tab. That is very fair because it's not going into the uh not going. Oh, I know what is happening. I mean, if I might be calling new line uh, next too much. So we're getting the so we're getting the C. Yeah, we're getting the C. So our we're getting this line. So we're skipping the new line first. Um, I have to go back and figure out like where is that. Um. So next, it's gonna break. So we call next here, and that should kind of work. Uh, we call next here. Am I calling next twice? Yeah, I am calling next twice. Uh, still. Else is next. Oh. Get where, but. Oh, no, I mean there. Enter. Uh, 
it does something on where we're calling next to like our next function is going to forward in the uh, string so we want to make sure that that's not happening okay, so Okay, so here, all next. Oh. Okay, I think now we're getting space or Maybe let's turn it back into a, uh, into a string. So that's kind of the only bad thing about working with. Yeah, we're still getting C. Why are we getting C? So X get space. I was calling X. Oh. oh. is that is good the next okay okay the next get there here so this will be just return here and when we return there and does it increase our position the only thing is like i think we might be moving too f much forward then but where okay so and this is why you don't write a bunch of code without testing some of it because like right now it's going so much forward um and we just have to go and break it down to like where it's going um, so I'm just gonna do it here. So so I feel like next is being called a bunch of times for it. And then is we're going character by character and every character that we go we're seeing. So we're passing the space. I don't know where our logic is getting us. Here we're not gonna see an empty space, so we just have to. Do it. There's not that much, that many spaces. Oh, I missed that. Okay, space. There is a space there. So we were there and it doesn't get called again. Next. 
rid of the space now. Is that where our Our peak is the one doing the bad stuff. No, so he returns the next character. Unless it's happening here. So let's see. Go back to here and check our uh and. We're getting the lamp. Not doing that there. Just need to make sure that whatever is setting uh token. Oh here's why. I am not doing that. And this is why we put it at the top of everything. So, we need to start a new token. Well, we are starting a new token. Start a new token. But, wait right there. That guy. So. So, next. Four by one. Can we turn it? And then that's kind of what rest is gonna be. Um, when we start a new token, the new token. Am I starting a new token? if I should but I'm doing weird here maybe I wonder if I should use peak just peak if next gets calling one so I'm guessing that C here is just an empty space yeah this is what happens when you just right, Joko. Not testing it. Uh, okay, so base and base, and then if I go back here. The token is finished, so something is forcing the token to go into the next one, so into the next uh, character when you shouldn't. Um, so I just have to figure out where the token is. Uh, so, so there's something that is pushing the token forward. Uh, so when we're peaking, uh, so let's see, we're peaking here, and when we peak, we're too forward. Why are we too forward? We should see the space. So. Uh, so if you're enjoying watching me uh, just be completely lost in the call, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we are trying to achieve a goal of 70 subscribers uh, in the next couple of uh, weeks. Uh, so if you're uh, enjoying watching me write some goal and just like scratch my head around certain things, uh, don't forget to follow. And we are uh, three followers away from becoming an affiliate. So. If you're enjoying this, don't forget to follow. Cool. Uh, so, back to this. Um, so, we are not getting. So, when we peak, we're not getting the. Uh, 
position we want, we are getting one offer. So there is something that is causing our um, so our next function is doing something is being called multiple times where it shouldn't. Um, I wonder. So for sure we're returning next. We're returning. Oh, that's pretty much the issue. So I should just speak here. Uh, we're we're moving to where um where since we're we don't want to do anything with we want to handle the uh, next ourselves. So it, we are calling next in here too soon. So if we peek and we have a space, we just call next. Sorry, we we just we just, we're not changing our position. So we're just saying uh, here is the next character. Uh, if it's, there is a space, then we break out of the loop and we finish our changes. We finish we finish our token, so that's the end of the token. And then we just uh, call next. Sorry, we just call next if it's not uh, empty space. Okay, this is much better. So we're right now we're getting an empty space. Um, and because I messed up the naming, it should be uh, white space. Um, they, so the issue was mostly that I was calling uh, next when I should just be calling P and then call next. Okay, so now we have a white space. Um, and the next token that we're going to get. Um, so we're now here. Right? So we have a space. Now we're here. So I will create a new token and just call it half. So I'm going to create uh, tokens for for the commands themselves. So here is just half. And I'll add it here. So half and just OK. Um, this is going to be a bit interesting because we, we are going to now we know where we are. Um, so we are here, we're going to move forward and we know that there's going to be asterisk and the knowledge. Um, so I, th I will treat this whole thing as commands. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to treat them all as commands because we're getting three. Commands. So we're going to get space. Um, Followed by uh, the actress, followed by um, followed by um, the knowledge command. So the knowledge command, then. Uh, we get another colon and then we get the message. So we, we handled that already. Uh, so the next thing that we have to do is just like, um, it's gonna be interesting because we don't have to uh, manually, we only have to move our pointer forward for this keys here. So we know that this is three characters, so we just forward three characters. Uh, we know that we have to check how many characters this is and then we just move it forward. Um, so uh, we just have to move the pointer forward and we don't have to handle them because we know they're, they're tokens and we just handle those tokens ourselves. Cool. So we handle spaces now correctly. Uh, we handle calling correctly. Um, and then the next thing that we need to handle is if we start with a C here. Um, wait, capital letter. Um, if we start with a uh, capital letter C, we have to move our pointer. Um, twice. So we're gonna call sorry three times. So we're gonna call next three times here. Um, what we're doing here is just pushing the, the our pointer forward three times um, because we want to do. So first we want to just take uh, the, this one here, then this one, this letter here, and then this letter. 
um, and we do the same thing that we did with uh, space. Wait, so. Uh, we need to go lower here. So we didn't move, we didn't push ourselves. We don't, we didn't move the pointer forward. Um, cool. So if the first letter of the next token of the next character starts with capital C, that means we're in our next uh, token. And then we could take that token. Um, we're going to save it to Val. And then we're gonna just going to finish it because we don't we don't need anything here. There is no extra information that we have to collect. Uh, so we're going to close it and then we're going to return uh, Val and then our token cap. Um, cool. So now we should just see that happening. Where are we? That's white space. Again, I just have to continue copying and pasting because I just want to move the pointer forward. Um, when I start writing the test for you, I will uh, I will have to go back in. Yeah, so that means that we have cap now. Um, and now, if I call this again, we have face. Okay, so we have space. Uh, the next case that we have to handle is if we have a uh, asterisk here, right? So we have this here. We are pretty much just gonna move forward once because there's no other character that we need to acknowledge. Um, and then we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna uh, start the token and then we're gonna close the token. And I just have to uh, move the pointer forward for our scanner. So I'm just going to copy that. Um, I have to return. Yeah, I have to return. Uh, here, I'm going to return uh, the value. Uh, and then I'm going to return. Uh, so I'm returning the value and I'm returning a asterisk. Oh wait. So I read too much. Wonder what did I read? Wait, what did the error happen? Yeah, so we read too much somewhere. Where were we? But it printed out. Error. Okay, so I wonder uh, if we're in here. Sprint, what is. Again, I might just be moving on point, the pointer too much. So we have space. Uh, print. Yes. Now it's not very helpful because the only one that has a value is. 
Uh, so back in. Uh, oh, so I'm doing asteroid. So there's a space. Okay, so there's a space. And let's join the era. So we're panicking because we're running out of space. So need to move this kind of forward. Okay, so the scanner is now in space. it is I know what it is it's not even our it's something to do here so I didn't add so I added three commands and I didn't add it here so add service is working. that is why it's spelling and then the knowledge makes me uh, and that's why they was trying to error uh, and the reason why the, the error kind of was not very helpful is because it's happening in here. So it's happening when I'm passing it into the uh, print function. Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, so we have the, the um, asterisk and then we could do the acknowledgement. So for the knowledge man, we can like again just add it. We push the uh, the scanner for one token, um, and then we check what that the first character is. And in this case, if the character equals uh, capital A, uh, we can our next token, and then we have to move it forward. Nice. Uh, sorry, three times. Um. This. Um, so we could make this call more useful. And after we're done, because like, I think it's very, very repetitive. Next twice. Uh, sorry, three times. No, no, no. we are gonna do. Uh, it goes. Uh, a, B, A. Now knowledge. Um, and then run it again. I need to call it again. Get it. So I have to call it twice. Uh, because the last case we already handled it. Uh, so now we have the white space. Have, uh, the white space here, and then if I call it one more time, we should get uh, everything else. Um, and then I will call it. I will have to call it one more time because I want to see how it fails. So I could have 
So when we are out of when we are out of um, we don't have any more tags, uh, any more characters to read. I want to see how that works. Shouldn't have fell right there. Uh, so we have the white space. Uh, oh. Okay. So the mistake that we made here is that it checks for C, but it also should check for uh, zero. So if it's uh, an empty space, but if it's also zero, we should stop there. We shouldn't keep going. That's kind of the error that we're seeing. Uh, so we just have to call our next token function another time. And Uh, so we have, yeah, I did mess up the order. Uh, so now we have the information that we need. So um, if I call it another time, it's gonna just straight up fail. Um, because we didn't add a end of token. So we just need to figure out how to handle the end token. Okay, so I just have to define a token that is the end of it. Okay. I just Added to the top, and now we have another token. Uh, then we just have to add it here. So, uh, EOF just means end of file. Uh, it's used in a lot of uh, operating systems and a lot of places to just mark when you reach the end of a file. Um, and then when you reach the end of the file, you just have to break out of it. Okay, cool. Uh, so, that is. Um, that's not done yet. So I need to do one more thing. I need to use it. Um, so we probably reached this a lot. So let's just stay here. If we get to we get a zero, we're gonna return. Um, we're at the end, so we're gonna start a token, pass value to it. There is not there. Then we're gonna uh, end that token. And then since we're ending it, we are going to return uh, the value and then the, our new token. Cool. Uh, and then we just run it. I save it. Okay. Um, cool. Um, so that means that we have now an end of file. And we could just uh, turn this whole mess of a code that I just wrote into something useful. Um, so the way I would change this up to be able to support our new changes. So first, uh, I'm going to create a for loop, um, and it's going to just use the scanner here. Um, and then we're going to loop until we reach our token is equals to our end of file token. And if it is, we break. Uh, and then here we're just going to print we're going to print our uh, value and we're going to print our token uh, 
I'm going to put in 10x. And we don't need any of this anymore because now we have a way to stop it. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so now we have a way to stop it. So we can just uh, do a for a while loop um, that is going to loop until it, end, it gets to the end of our input. And then when it gets to the end of the input, um, it's just going to break out of the for loop. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how it looks like. So, um, so we have a text here, and we have a text here. We don't have text anywhere else. Um, so that was our initial scanner. So that means that we could write test right now. Um, so we could just go here and get some samples. So, oh, before I do this, let's just make it into like a tokenizer. We're gonna create a buff inside of that buff. Uh, we're just gonna write to it. So, uh, we're just gonna create a string to keep track of it for us. The first, this is the first time we have to use the standard packages in this whole uh, process. Yeah, so I just need an example to figure out how to do it. Oh, no. Okay, so I just have to use that. That makes sense. Okay, so we have a buffer. We have a buffer that we're going to use to write to it. Writing to it is things, so we are gonna write. So we are writing to it to write a string. Our um, string. Taking our token, we're writing to it. We are gonna write it to the buffer. And then we are also gonna write the value to it. So in some cases, it's just gonna be an NT. There's not gonna be anything there. Um, and then we're gonna print it. So we're gonna be using this for our um, testing. But when we start, we write our test x, we're going to use this output as our uh, output for it. Oh, I need some. That's weird. Okay. Um, it's because it's a, a slice of bytes. I have to turn it into a string. Now that it's a string, I could just. Run it and make some change. Oh wait, uh, already forgot. It has its own method, so I could do string. Scanner, the token is So, to 
just gonna ignore it for now, and then we're just gonna rerun it and see. Yeah, it's just empty. Why is it writing empty? Uh. We need to add a space. Space, and then Oh, that looks better. So, over. So, what we're getting is fallen, then the Twitch server, uh, then the man, the white space, then asterisk, white space, uh, the asterisk, white space, and things like that. So, this is great because we could use this for the testing side of things. So, what is happening now? So we are taking our tokens. So we are. This is what the. Uh, so our next token returns two functions. Uh, sorry, two values. One is the value, which has the uh, the current value of the token and the position of where the token starts. So for example, uh, the colon has uh, starts in position one, and it has a value of second. So it has a value of uh, this here, right? Uh, then, hey, how's it going? Um, so I am currently writing a Go parser for uh, the Twitch chat messages. Um, I am doing well. I um, we've uh, we were stuck for a bit, but we got over that. Um, so we're doing doing well. Uh, we're just finishing up writing some of the tests. Um, in Go. So we're just gonna finish writing some of the tests. Um. And so we're going to do something called table driven development in Go, which allows you to uh, just have one function that allows you to send. Uh, so we're going to just send, uh, we're going to, so we have three cases that we need to test for. Um, with table driven development, you only do like one case. Uh, so we're just writing some tests for our Twitch client, which uh, is pretty much what you see here. Uh, there's actually people watching uh so no there is people actually watching um so the way it works is there i could tell you so there is at least oops okay uh i could tell you how many people are watching oh so there are seven people watching so uh so right now there are seven people watching the stream um and there are about uh some random bots that are part of the stream which are always run uh, randomly joining um so i could tell you how many we have give me a second uh i think the, the so um that is No, uh, so there, there is, uh, so there is, uh, they might have the chat turned off too. So I could, uh, oh, you know what? So if they have the chat turned off, so if you click the, um, the hide the chat, you won't be able to ping them. Um, that's most likely why you cannot ping them. Yeah. So I don't see those two. Uh, you can only add me because the other people that are watching the chat most likely don't have the chat open. Um, if they don't have the chat open, you won't be able to see it. 
yeah so if they uh if they are in if they exit out the chat uh you still cannot see them um and most likely uh the reason why i could see them is because um i have the moderator tool turns on so i could see people that are watching uh sorry people that are not in the chat but they are watching and they log in Wait, really? Were you having the issue too? <laughs> well, good thing, like, that's a good thing. Wait, so you guys have been hanging out the whole time with the chat turned off. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah, you're you're sign in. If you could, if you could post messages, you could you're sign in. Okay, so uh, that's very funny. Uh, yeah, make sure you're sign in. If you want to chat, because if you're not signed in, you won't be able to send chat messages. Uh, but yeah, so um, I'm just uh, for the past two hours, uh, we've just been working in a uh, way to uh, parse uh, wish messages. We only have one bot in the account in the uh, that is mine, um, which is the one that is uh, this guy over here. Um, which is the one that we're working with. So this guy is, is the only bot that we have here. Ah, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, but yeah, so this is the only uh, account that we are using that is only uh, supposed to be about everyone else to be uh, human and watching. Uh, there is other ones that there is another some weird ones that are not mine. There is like another viewer, which is I don't know why it does. And there is Commander Root, which is also weird. I don't know why it why they do either. Um, and there's a couple more, uh, but I, this is the only ones I know. Yeah, so we are just hanging out. I'm very using call, uh, listening to some music, uh, chatting with people that are like in. So make sure you like in, um, and just like yeah, just writing it. We're just writing a parser for the messages. Um, and that's pretty much what the uh, the bot that I uh, is running right now does. It just um, it's a simple uh, bot that we ended up writing, uh, I believe, like Sunday of this week, where it just does the basis, the very basic that you could do with the Twitch API. Um, so the way it works is it just like listens to the sorry to the Twitch chat. So it listens to the Twitch chat for uh, login events. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be around tomorrow, same time. Uh, so three ish, I'll be hanging out. Uh, well, not not tomorrow. Sorry, not tomorrow. So I don't see tomorrow or Thursday. So I'll be here Friday. So I'll be hanging out on Friday. So uh, you should stop by on Friday. Um, but I will see you later. Later. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, and thank you for watching. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so um, we ended up just writing a simple client uh, for connecting to the Twitch chat, uh, which connects to, to it connects our um, we authenticate with our bot account. Then we set a nickname. Then we set a channel, um, and then every time someone signs in, um, sorry, every time someone joins the, the chat, it sends a message saying what I'm working on. Uh, it's still buggy. Sometimes it's like five or six people join at the same time. Uh, it will send it five times, which you only send it like once. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the thing that we're working on. Um, and then on the right side, we have a view of like all the messages that Twitch is sending to the chat. Um, and then we could go back and fix it. Yeah, so you could see, um, you, I, I don't know if you could see it, the thing that happens is like you have to wait at least like 10 seconds or something like that before it joins again 
uh, but someone just joined a few minutes ago. Um, so yeah, so every time someone joins, it's, it's going to do it. So this person join and then come out. Um, so like every time someone joins, it's a, it sends a message saying, hey, this is what uh, we're working on today. Um, and it's just a, a text file that I created uh, that I said it's like currently working on. And the, the, the bug itself is just reading that file. So every time uh, someone uh, someone joins the chat, it's just going to send that information. Uh, because sometimes I forget to say what I'm working on or re like re-emphasizes what I'm working on. Uh, so the first part of this is that I'm writing a parser to parse all of these messages into something useful that we could use for later on. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is that I want it as part of the chat, uh, as part of the stream, I want to make sure that uh, we show um, like your messages. I want it to be part of the stream too. So I want to just like pop it up, like pop in the side, like what you said with, or, like what you're talking about, and then uh, just scroll up as people are typing. Uh, so that's the first thing I want to do. Uh, but first we have to learn how to parse, we're, we need to figure out how to parse these messages, right? Um, so that's kind of what we're working on right now. Um, so what I'm doing is going to, so there in computer science, there's this thing called uh, parse theory, which is just a way to parse uh, data or like if you're running a, pro a programming language or something like that, um, you create like a scanner and then tokenize it. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. Uh, so I'm just creating a, a tokenizer that uh, takes a input um, and then tokenize it into uh, something that we know what they are and from there we could just start writing different uh, if we write a parser that starts doing different functionality depends on the token that it sees um, and that's kind of how the logic itself is going to work um, uh, it depends um, yeah so like uh, send it over um, and let's see what, it, like, what is the project about? Uh, you can send it over. Uh, I could look at it over, but I think I'm going to end the stream in like, uh, 30 more minutes. Um, But yeah, if you if you have something, send it over and I can look over. Uh, and don't forget to follow. I am only three followers away from being an affiliate, so uh, don't forget to follow. <laughs> oh, that sounds very cool. Cool. Thank you for the follow. And that's our second that we built that uh, that notification uh, two weeks ago. It's still a bit buggy. Uh, so we're still working on fixing it. So there is a cat that just comes down, uh, and it's part of the API that we ended up building. Um, but yeah, it's, if you have a GitHub, uh, with your project, just post it there. Um, and then I will go, um, I could go through the stream now and like, look at it over, or I could just do it, uh, Friday as part of the stream too. Um, and then like, I could leave some comments in your uh, Twitch account. Oh, you don't, uh. Where are you keeping the code then? Or are you trying to figure out like how to write it? Also, what language are you using? Oh, you're, you don't even know how to set up. Do you, how do you start writing it or just like thinking about writing it? Oh, you're using Java. So I am roasting Java, but I could, I could take, uh, so Okay, so you're starting Java. Um, so I think here's the thing you should do. Um, you should get it on GitHub. Um, you should get it on GitHub. Oh, I think we have a new follower. The alert hasn't gone off yet, but uh, Flambro, thank you, Ron. Thank you for the follow. Um, I very appreciate it a lot. Uh, so you could, so maybe the easiest way is just to look at the Discord. So I haven't looked at the Discord uh, API before. Uh, are you using a, a third-party package? 
So I, uh, when you're writing your, uh, are you importing any like external packages to connect to this core? Oh, so you get messages. Cool. There we go. So there is a delay on the alert. So uh, it took about two minutes for it to show up, but uh, there is easy ways to fix it. Oh, so you're just connecting directly to their API. Okay. So uh, let's see. Um, so I'm guessing that you're using create. Um, so is this the API that, you, that you're using? Okay, so if this is the API you're using, um, you need to make sure that you have the correct permissions in your account. Uh, so you have to make sure that you, you're connect, you are authenticator and you have the right permissions for it. Okay. Uh, oh, so you have a working one. So you're trying to make another one. Oh, also, uh, we have a Discord channel too, so that might make it a lot easier. So we could chat after. So if you want to hang out, we have this Discord channel for ourselves. Um, um, and then we could figure out like what is going on with your, where your, where your butt. So yeah, so, so join the Discord channel, um, and then, cool. Oh, I see. Uh, so you have to go here. Um, you create an account. And then you also need to install this. So I am guessing that you're using Windows, so you will have to install this. Also, if it's like that will be like the easiest way to do it. Um, and then I wouldn't have to, uh, it will be like straightforward to that. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna finish writing the test, but um, afterwards, try, like go through the, try putting the code into um, into GitHub and then we could, uh, we could look at it together. Um, and then, yeah, if you have any other questions, we could do it there. Or we could do it in Discord. Cool. Um, okay, so going back to this. So um, I just want to write some tests first and then, um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna write some tests first and then we could just uh, raise someone. So I'm gonna finish writing the tests. Uh, so we're going to be using test driven development table sorry table driven development um, so we just have to look for a sample structure okay uh, so that is putting it together uh, so a table driven test in go is just a way to pass multiple uh, messages to it so we're going to do that so the way it's going to look like uh wait yeah it's a bit confusing because you're doing kind of a lot in one place. Uh, so we just want to pass. We are just going to pass something. So we have tests. Uh, so we have input. So 
let's just try some things in here. So first we want to input, we're going to input this here and we're expecting to get back uh, this here. Which I messed up somewhere. Yeah, there's no space. I need to put a space. Uh, but then, okay, so that's how it will look like. Uh, it's gonna be a bit, a bit long, so we might have to move this to a file or something. Um, they should. There shouldn't be that many files. If you start building it yourself, there shouldn't be that many files. Um, and with get, with get, you could just like add as many files as you. Uh, there's no limitation on how many files you could have in a in a uh, codebase. So you could ask as many files. Cool. Uh, so now change message test that input are we putting in um, uh, Yeah, so I don't think you should upload it through Discord. Um, you should you shouldn't upload the code through Discord. Um, you should just uh, learn. You should just go and uh, put it into GitHub or GitLab. So then you could just we could just go through it and I could leave comments on it. So uh, that means I don't have to run it myself. Um, so that's kind of the way I would do it. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so if put in uh, if when you put it in GitHub, just put it in the Discord channel. Uh, I don't think I don't GitHub doesn't have a limit. Um, so this is what I mean. You see how I could see my code here, um, and the way I did that was by um, so I installed I installed uh, uh, Git and then I uploaded it. I just ran in this command. So. You could try that, that would be a lot easier. Cool, so I am one follower away from uh, being a affiliate. So if you're watching and you're not following me, follow me. Um, yes. Yes, I don't know why it's complaining. Okay. Um, oh, we have got. So I'm just checking that the output matches the input. Uh, so we can make sure that our test is working correctly. Oh, uh, it's cool.
Oh wait, you're you're using JavaScript. So you're using JavaScript. Oh. So, oh wait, don't don't. So see, you're using JavaScript. Don't upload this this directory. Uh, don't upload it. So if you see this directory, just avoid it. Don't don't upload it at all. I think that's an issue. Uh, yeah, that file, that directory is monstrous. That that there has like, it's not a hundred. It's thousands. You could get like thousands of files. Like there is a lot in there. So usually you just want to ignore that file. Uh, sorry, that directory. Yeah, so um, since it has all the dependencies that you're using, so if you're using like a ton of dependencies, it's just gonna take forever. Okay, so I think our tests are working. This is kind of sketchy. Nope, it's not working. Yeah, so uh, don't upload your your. Um... So, got what? I'm gonna have me messy one, basically. <laughs> oh yeah, don't don't upload your token. Uh, you have to change it now. So um, no one in the in the Discord channel is gonna mess it up. Yeah, you, you, you just change it. Yeah, just change the token. Uh, that's pretty much what it happens. It's very cool that they send you a private message and telling you that that happened. Um, but yeah, you can just change the token. Okay, so yeah, uh, well you should change it now because then bad people could use it. You don't want other people to use it. You should change it now, um, and then just don't upload it again. Okay. Uh. Well, they could they could they could take control over it fully. So they could take control over it and add it to other channels too, and start spamming people. Uh. I have too many spaces. Oh yeah, I have too many spaces. I should check if. It's I wonder if I'm putting a, a space at the end. Oh wait, don't don't change it on GitHub because if you change it on GitHub again, uh, it's just gonna complain again. So you want you don't want it in GitHub. You just don't upload it. You just leave the old one in there. Okay, yeah, don't 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 upload it. Because that's kind of why you got that, that message. Uh, so, but the reason it's not working correctly. So, I don't know why. Okay, that's a good one. Um. I am doing something weird where I might be adding a space where it doesn't belong. What am I doing weird?
The only bad thing about testing in Go is that there is no easy way for us to do any kind of um, like diff. Oh wait, I could just do a diff myself. Uh, so this is what we're expecting. I'm gonna use a diff online. On. This is what we're getting. Oh, we're getting too many, too many, too much faces. Why are we getting so many? You never put your your if you're doing JavaScript, you never put your uh, no uh, no modules in there. You only put your um, yeah, like the code that you're writing yourself. Okay, so you have a command file that is being read and you're setting it up. So you're using the Discord client. Cool. Um, so this is fine. Dang, dang it. Uh, if the client is paying, I uh, see so your uh, when you do when you ping, do you get a response back? Oh, and then this works, right? This ping works. Oh, so you're testing your Minecraft. Cool. So when you run the ping command, does it work or it just uh, doesn't work at all? Oh, that's weird. Oh, uh, I, I'm having a bit of an internet issue. Uh, so yeah, to, it doesn't work or Oh, so the ping works, but you want to add more commands, right? Does, do you see it in Discord? So, I mean, like, when you run this command here, right? Okay, so that this one works. Uh, what is the part that doesn't work? Oh, it's working now then. So you're not having any issues? Cool. I'm glad it's working now. Um, and now I have a Discord client to write my own bot. So if I ever want to write one, I could use, uh, I could use this one here. Wait, where is it? This one here. Cool, I'm glad it works. Um, so, um, welcome to GitHub. Uh, GitHub is used for uh, storing all your code. So uh, it's public available to most people. So usually you, there is a way to create private, private and public repos. Um, if you want to keep like some secrets in here, I would suggest not to, but you create a private repo that has your secrets. Oh, you don't know how to start it. Or how to run the server command. Oh, how to run the server command itself. Um, so, let me just look at this package because I haven't looked at it before.
Oh, okay. So you need help with, let me, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you need help figuring out how to, do you start the server? Is it running? Or it hasn't started, you can get it started. Yeah, my internet is doing a bit bad here. Do you mean? Uh, we should chat. Let's chat about it in the Discord channel that I just sent. Um, because that would be easier. Uh, and we don't have the delay there. So I could just reply there. Uh, so let me finish writing this test and then I will hop into the Discord channel after we raise someone. Um, and then that means we could finish the string itself. Um, so we could chat in the Discord channel. So let me finish writing this test and figure out what's wrong with it. Um, and then we could just jump in. Uh, in the Discord channel, and we could figure out how to get the like figuring out what you're trying to do. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't know that the stream was so delayed. Um, oh, I have the space here too. Yeah, I wonder why is it so delayed. Okay, so we have spaces here. Problem. Yep, so um, in most cases, you can so because we built a um, we are built we are hooking up to the shot to the server shot uh, sorry to the um, Twitch shot we could see when someone joins the shot for the first time uh, so we could see you joining here um, and then someone else joining too uh, you could see them almost in real time um, but uh, I I don't want to abuse it much I'm just sometimes like one of the suggestions I got for my stream. Yeah, that's that's one of the suggestions I got from my stream was uh, uh, people don't know what I'm working on most of the time, and sometimes I'm not really good at recapping what I'm doing. Uh, so I just made a a bot itself that just listens for the join uh, when someone joins the chat for the first time, um, and it tells them, "Hey, uh, I am currently working on a, a parsing messages from Twitch using Go." So that's pretty much what I'm doing. Um, sometimes it could get annoying. Uh, and I need, I need to tweak it a bit. Uh, so, so right now it's like two things going on. So I have a, so I'm writing, I wrote a simple client that does all the work for me. Um, so I could show you that. Um, so this is pretty much what is doing that functionality that you just saw. Um, I just have, I just wrote a simple uh, goal uh, using the goal language, a simple uh, program that connects to the Twitch SaaS server. So I connect to the Twitch SaaS server uh, here. Then I send a bit of commands to the server saying who I am and what I'm trying to do. So I am telling it that I am a, a uh, the account authentication for it. And then I join my channel. So I'm joining my channel here. Um, and then I just start writing to it. So um, one thing that we need to do is that we need to ping this, uh, the Twitch server pings us from time to time. Yeah, so it just listens to that event and just like it just pretty much just sends back to it. Um, that's kind of why I've been doing it. Uh, and then I'm trying to make this more advanced because right now this is, is very simple. What I'm trying to do is make it a bit more difficult. Um, but that's kind of what we're going for here. Um, we could also listen for when people leave. Um, but again, I'm, I, I don't want to be noisy. I don't want to tell people like, hey, um, 
subscribe or something like that. Um, it's mostly like for information, like I want to be, um, it, it, um, I would say it kind of sucks to just join the channel and you don't know what I'm working on. So there's no way for you to participate. Uh, so I thought that it would be very nice to be able to just show that, um, that little message saying like, this is what I am currently working on. Um, and then uh, to make it to like, for the grand vision of what I'm working on, I'm trying to get this. So I am, so I used to do goal two years ago. Um, I stopped doing Go and then I'm trying to go back to um, relearning it. So I'm just going back and making some, like learning how to do it. And one of the things I want to do is like, uh, some of the tools are already available. Yeah, so that's kind of the next thing I'm going to uh, try doing, right? It's like the next thing I, I'm going to do is like add more commands to it. So I'm going to, uh, so I'm going to add social for, for example. Um, and I'm going to add a bit of like, um, as part of the stream, every time that someone joins as a moderator or a VIP or something like that, I want to show it, I'm going to work with them in the chat. Um, sorry, inside of this stream too. So like their name will pop up somewhere. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on. So I could learn a bit of, uh, so I'm relearning Go while building some of the streaming tools that would be cool to use. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, bots and libraries that you can use to be able to do these things. Um, but it's, it's, I want to learn some of the, uh, I want to relearn the Go and this is one of the best ways to do it. It's just like, sit down and, and just like make these things myself yeah so i've been streaming for two weeks now so back and forth um so my schedule is mostly like mondays tuesdays fridays and sundays that's kind of how i've been i'm gonna be streaming um and just like me just uh, talking to the chat and or just um trying to write some mini tests um so that's kind of what i'm working on um so after this i'm gonna um just hang out in our discord channel for a bit but yeah if you like this and you're trying to learn a new programming language or you just want to hear me ramble or complain for a while don't forget to press that follow button i am one follower away from becoming an affiliate so it would be nice to get a follow if you do enjoy it um if not if you have any suggestions how to make the channel better i welcome those too So what I'm doing now is just, I am writing a test um, and for reason, for some reason my test cases is not matching correctly. So I wonder if I'm doing something weird, uh, but I might have to jump off um, and then come back later. But for now, I think I'm gonna just try to figure out this before I leave. But yeah, so that's kind of what I'm really working on. I've been working on trying to like uh, go back to learning the language itself um, and like all the, uh, the things that I forgot about that the language was doing that I should know better. Um, so yeah, so a bit of back and forth and uh, the voice, the, the uh, chat example itself is just like, um, I think it's very helpful. Um, at least to learn how to parse these things. Um, so I'm just learning how to parse these things. Um, but you can see it's like very, very like, there's a lot of information that I will have to figure out how to parse. So the first part is like parsing the simple thing that happened on the top. So when you first join, you get this message. Um, I think I left a few spaces. What I'm dealing now is like there is a, I have a bunch of spaces and I need to figure out how to deal with them. Um, let's run this somewhere else. Um, so the thing that I'm doing now is that I'm using a technique called table driven testing, um, which is you write, um, you have the input. So what you put into, uh, what you put into the, uh, into the parser, into the scanner, and then you put what you want out of it. So this is what I'm putting in and this is what I'm getting out. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing now. The issue that I'm having is that the input doesn't match the output. So I'm wondering if I'm doing something here. Like there's a bunch of spaces. Uh, so I'm probably having some issues with Yeah, so there are some weird things to do with the spacing. So I need to figure out where 
is my spacing going off? Okay, I see. I see where. Um, but like this, after I get this correct, um, I don't have to worry about it anymore. It, it just um, it just works. Uh, let's see. So we're still having issues with the input. So uh, we are going to go back to our different tool. Uh, and since I'm doing gold, gold doesn't really have a nice different library um, as part of the standard library. I don't have to do much of most of the stuff yourself. Um, so the issue is that I don't have a I have a white space. Wait, where where is the white space? That's not right. I do have a white space. Why do I have Okay, so that's pretty much what I've been doing. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to finish these sets and then uh, probably jump off. But if you like what you're watching, uh, I'll be back on Friday. Um, and to get notified, you should follow me. Something is forcing it where there is no the white space that is supposed to be there is not there. Um, but it should be there. Oh, it's there now. Where is it going? Oh. Okay. Getting. They're the same now. So what is happening? Oh, uh, so what is happening now? Well, the issue is happening is that okay? I think I could just leave it like that for now. It's just parsing here. So, what is happening is that I'm getting this now. Oh, we know space. Because they're just giving me a hard time, so I'm just going to remove all the space. So, it's going to look like a constant stream of thought on here. It's gonna make it a bit more harder to read, but it will probably take us out of the facing. There we go. Uh, it was just the spacing was off by a lot. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoy this, uh, don't forget to subscribe. We're one follower away from being an affiliate. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Um, let's find someone for us to pay. Oh, pay. Uh, this doesn't look like it. There's anyone to pay. So I will see you guys. Uh, Friday. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Yeah.